the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, mecca of Major League Football in Southern California. Here last fall, more than 300,000 fans watched the Los Angeles Dons during their seven home games and in other saucers of steel and concrete. In cities like New York, Chicago, Buffalo, Cleveland, and San Francisco, over two million people poured through the turnstiles to see football, major league football, as played in the All-America Conference. They come out early, too, these fans, for there's always that pre-game color and entertainment. Long before kickoff time, there's music by Dave Malloy and his Los Angeles Don Band. While they're listening to the music, munching their peanuts or sipping their Cokes, there's always that pregame conversation about the stars they'll see in action. Stars like Buffalo's George Ratterman, sensational 20-year-old rookie from Notre Dame whose brilliant passing lifted the Buffalo Bills from the cellar of the league right to the very top. Stars like Orban Speck Sanders and Buddy Young of the New York Yankees, a double-barrel dose of gridiron poison and the football Yankees version of Murderer's Row. All-American Buddy Young, the jet-propelled speedster from the University of Illinois. And Speck Sanders, the one-man gang from Texas University. With new major league records for ball carrying and scoring, Sanders in one season gained almost two miles by passing and running. That's the opposition. But the Dons have their own stars, too. At center, All-American Bob Nelson from Baylor. At guards, All-Americans Bill Radovich of USC and Ray Frankowski of Washington. At tackle, All-Americans Lee Arto and Bob Reinhardt from California. And the ends, All-Americans Dale Gentry from Washington State and UCLA's Burr Baldwin. In the backfield, a quartet of All-Americans. Kelly of Notre Dame, O'Rourke of Boston College, Kimbrough of Texas A&M, and Glenn Dobbs of Tulsa. With Dobbs, one of the truly great all-around backs in football, and little Charlie O'Rourke, the Dons pack quite a touchdown punch. And when they need that extra point, Booten Ben Agajanian steps forward, and when Ben steps forward, you can chalk it up on the scoreboard. And here's the kickoff of the first Sunday game of the 1947 season. Down on the goal line, it's gathered in by Dobbs. He starts back upfield, but wait, let's stop. Stop and go back to see how a major league football machine like the Dons is built. It's early July on US 101. Let's imagine you are in that car. You're from some small, out-of-the-way college, but hand-picked eight months ago by an eagle-eyed Don scout. Now you'll battle it out with rookies, some with all-American reputations, and with returning veterans from last year's Don 11 for a place on the 1947 team. But big league football is a tough game. And so, in spite of your youth, your powerful physique, you're given a careful, thorough physical examination. And strangely enough, it's here that one or two fail to make the grade without ever having touched a football. But you're okay, and it's out to the practice field. Here, before the first session gets underway, Bob Reinhardt, captain of last year's team, introduces President Don Amici to the entire squad. Thanks for the greeting, fellas. I only hope that the end of the season, you'll feel the same way to it. Those of you who were members of the Dons last fall may recall what I said on the same field last year, that on each one of your shoulders as individuals rests a great responsibility to a great community. As outstanding athletes, each one of you will serve as an inspiration to the youth of Los Angeles. These kids think that whatever you do on or off the field is the thing to do. We of the Dawn management want a winning football team, but we also expect each one of you to be a credit to this community. All we ask is you play the game with everything you've got. Play it hard, but play it clean. Make the Dons a, not only a team that you're proud to be a member of, but a team that the community can be proud to call its own. Thank you and good luck. But work starts slowly at a big league football camp. At first, it's mostly calisthenics, chalk talks, calisthenics, and more calisthenics. Then it's back to fundamentals, for that's what wins football games. A fast, hard charge, a clean, solid block that opens up a touchdown path for the ball carrier. And when the other team has the ball, you've got to be able to stop them. So in spite of the fact you've got eight years of football under your belt, four in high school and four in college, it's back to fundamentals, and it's tackle and block, block and tackle, day after day after day. 
When you get a chance, you watch the four kid football teams organized by the L.A. Police Department to play between halves at all Don home games. And they get the best of coaching, too, from men like all-time All-American center Mel Hines. Then it's back to work and you start running through plays, the same plays, over and over again, polishing, working out the mistakes, repolishing, getting your timing down to the last split second. And that goes on eight hours a day. You talk football, eat it, sleep it. And then one day the pieces fit together, the gears mesh, and you've got a football team, a team with speed and power and deception. The kid team is rounded into shape, too, and you're both ready for the start of the season. You're on your way to the Coliseum as a member of the Don. Captain Bob Reinhardt leads you into the Coliseum dressing room. You're a little nervous as overhead you hear the stamp and shuffle of thousands of feet. So you start undressing, slowly, and you laugh at one of the other boys to ease that tight, nervous feeling in the pit of your stomach. Your ankles are firmly taped to stand the terrific strain of those sudden stops and starts, the weaving, turning, and twisting you'll do out there on the field. You watch a veteran lineman tackle Paul Mitchell, having his wrists taped, and you notice that nothing is overlooked by these sure-fingered trainers. You realize that a lot of injuries are prevented right here in the dressing room. Your equipment is the best that money can buy. Lots of it's specially built, too, for the fellows who need added protection. Like this man from Mars helmet that tackle Lee Arto wears to shield a thrice broken nose. Your jersey fits snugly, so there's no loose material for a would-be tackler to grab. And when you're dressed, you weigh 17 pounds more than when you started. You and other rookies like Sugarfoot Anderson are ready long before the veterans. So you stand and listen to quarterbacks Charlie O'Rourke and Glenn Dobbs go over an intricate pass pattern. And you wonder whether or not you'll get into the game, which is only minutes away. Other players quietly discuss their assignments, too. Then the door opens, time. and it's time to go. You're out on the field, and suddenly that tenseness, that nervousness is gone, and you're ready for big league football. And so are those 300,000 fans. It's Buffalo kicking off to the Don. Little Chuck Finnenbach gathers it in and brings it back 50 yards before he's brought down. Then O'Rourke snaps a 28-yard pass to left end Joe Aguirre, who makes a circus catch, and the savage tackle sends his helmet flying, but Joe holds onto the ball. It looks like the Dons are on their way when Harry Clark takes a lateral and sweeping wide around his own right end picks up 10 more yards. But three plays fail to gain, and Kimbrough trying for a first down, stumbling, falling, crawling forward, fighting for every inch, doesn't make enough, and Buffalo takes over. That's Glenn Dobbs on defense. His problem, will they pass or run? It's a run by Jeswick, but he doesn't get far. And so unable to gain against that giant down line, Buffalo's George Ratterman starts pitching. First with a 15-yard strike to his right end, and it takes two downs to bring him down. Again, it's Ratterman, and strike two with an underhand pitch to halfback Chet Neutron. And look at that swivel hip speedster eat up those chalk strikes as he goes 30 yards before Fennenbach and Frankowski bring him down on the down 31. It's Ratterman again with some sleight of hand, faking first to one halfback, then to the other, and then a 38-yard touchdown pass for strike three, and the Dons are out six points. So Buffalo kicks off, and like the last time, it goes straight to Chuck Fennenbach, and Chuck's off to the races, but somebody slips through and nails him with a vicious necktie tackle. Chuck really felt that one, and he's slow in getting up. These boys play for keeps. You've got to be tough to play this Major League football. Fennenbach is, for on the very next play, he makes a spectacular catch of a Glenn Dobbs pass, and the game is good for 53 yards. Now Dobbs, sending Fennenbach in motion as a decoy, steps back and whips a 30-yarder to Joe Gary, who takes it on the five and trots over for the score. Oh, where's your hanky? There's no doubt about the point after. Not with Boot and Ben as he puts the first of 39 squarely between the uprights. Now, in the closing moments of the game, Buffalo threatens to score again. But watch those two hard-charging down guards, Radovich and Frankowski, break up the play. Pouring through the Buffalo line, they're after Ratterman all the 
time. Radovich finally trips him, and Frankowski comes in to make sure he stays down. So now in their TWA chartered plane, the Dons take to the road for three weeks. But even while they're gone, people are talking about their next home game against the powerful Cleveland Browns. This is the Thanksgiving Day Classic, and the giant cavalcade that precedes the game is a sight to see. Marching band, giant floats with top NBC radio stars like Judy Canova and the great Gildersleeve. All the color and pageantry of a five-ring circus and a rodeo wrapped into one big show. This is what the fans see prior to that football game. Clean, wholesome entertainment and a real turkey day treat for the entire family. All this before the game that pits the world-famous Cleveland Browns against the only team to defeat them in 1947. For earlier in the season, before a jam-packed crowd of 70,000 in Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, the Dons handed the Browns a 13-10 licking. And now the Browns, led by their passing wizard Otto Graham and their phenomenal fullback Big Marion Motley, are out to gain revenge. And they start in with a vengeance as they kick off and dump the Don ball carrier practically on his own goal line. But the Dons fight their way back up the field to their own 24. From there, O'Rourke throws this 30-yard pass to end Burr Baldwin, who's brought down after 20 more yards on a flying tackle by the Cleveland safety man. Then Dobbs comes into the game and, faking another pass to Baldwin, throws a lob to Kimbrough. And Big John jars his way down to the Cleveland 7-yard line. But now the Cleveland line stiffens. Even the great Kimbrough fails to make enough for a first down. But in the second quarter, the versatile Dobbs again puts the Dons in scoring position. On a quarterback sneak, he breaks out into the open and goes 45 yards before being smacked out of bounds by four Cleveland players. But once again, the Cleveland line braces and holds. This time, Booten Ben Agaginian steps in, and with the ball on the 44-yard line, Ben puts it squarely between the uprights for three points. And right at that moment, the fans would gladly vote Ben into the office as the mayor of Anaheim. So the Dons kick off to Cleveland, and it's taken seven yards behind his own goal line by big 240-pound Marion Motley. And don't let that name Marion fool you. See what I mean? Now, with special delivery, Jones in motion to the right, quarterback Otto Graham sends Motley into the center of the Dons line, and he pulls his way forward for eight yards before being brought down by Gentry and Heath. Then with the Don defense drawn in, Graham whips a 34-yard pass to the left end, Max Speedy. And can those Cleveland end snag passes? Well, what do you think? Now it's Mr. Motley again. And this time, watch him go. Bang, he's through the line. Boom, he's past the secondary. And Marion Motley is on his way all the way, 46 yards to a Cleveland touchdown. And so it's Cleveland out front as Agaginian kicks off to open the second half. But the Dons are far from lit. They're fighting mad. They've got to get that ball. And here's the break of the game. A savage tackle. And Cleveland tumbles. But the Cleveland players don't like the way 260-pound Bill Radovich piled into their ball carrier. And for a moment or two, it looks as though there might be trouble out on the field. But cooler heads prevail, and the ball game goes on as usual with the referee's decision unchanged. Near the end of the quarter, the Dons begin to roll. Dobbs completes a 10-yard jump pass to Bob Nowoski, who fights his way forward for another three before being pulled down. Then, as the final period starts, Kimbrough blasts through a huge hole opened up by Lee Arto and goes 20 yards before being caught by Graham. There's a loose ball, and it's Reinhardt who takes it to the Cleveland 37. Again, Kimbrough smashes his way through the line and picks up 15 yards before Muffley brings him down from behind. But the referee detects a penalty on the play, and the entire gain is nullified. If a play clicks once, it should again. So Kimbrough tries the same thing once more, but this time he fails to gain at all as he's stopped by four Cleveland linemen. Unable to move on the ground, Dobbs takes to the air. It's just a short flip pass to little Chuck Pennenbach, but Chuck gathers it in and scampers 10, 20, 35 yards for the touchdown. Hey, that was perfect, so let's look at it again in slow motion. Dobbs takes the ball, fades back, fakes once, then lets it go. Watch Fennenbach. He slips past one tackler, then another, another. Now he's clear, and look at him sail. Yes, that was a great play and a great game. 
And as at all Don home games, between halves, the fans watch kid football. Like this game between Mickey Rooney's Fighting Irish and Bob Hope's Junior Don. And if you don't think these kids play tricky football, get a load of this fancy reverse by one of the Junior Dons, good for 35 yards. But it isn't always that perfect. Sometimes these 12-year-olds try too hard and a play misfires like this one. And the fans get a great kick out of it. Down on the field, Mickey Rooney excitedly yells instructions to his fighting Irish. And operating with the finesse of a big league club, the Irish shift into the Notre Dame box and pound over for the winning touchdown as the kid spectators go wild. But let's get back to the Don and another tough team they have to meet, the San Francisco 49ers. Spearheaded by a pair of former Stanford All-Americans, Southpaw Frankie Albert and Big Norman Stanley, the 49ers have always been a tough nut for the Dons to crack. But today looks like it might be another story as O'Rourke connects on the first play with a pass to Ezra Sugarfoot Anderson. And look at that big boy go! Again, it's O'Rourke. He steps back and lets one go. Downfield, Burr Baldwin takes it in stride and slipping out of a tackler's arms goes all the way to the San Francisco five-yard line before being brought down. From there, Charlie makes it look ridiculously easy as on the dead run, he lays the ball right in Burt Pigott's outstretched fingers for a touchdown. But Stanley, Albert, and company come roaring right back. First, it's Albert uncorking a beautiful pass to right end Alan Beals, good for 29 yards, and it takes three dons to bring him down. Then it's Stanley's turn, and the Chief gets away on a wide sweep around his own right end. With beautiful downfield blocking, he takes it to the Don 12. From there, using almost the same play with which O'Rourke scored, Albert connects with his other end, Nick Sussoff, for the touchdown. But good as he is, Frankie can't thread a needle with every pass. Sometimes it's just a yard off its mark, like this one, and Clay goes high in the air to Spirit for a Don interception. That's the break they've been waiting for. And now the Don strike quickly. First with O'Rourke passing 10 yards to the left halfback, Burt Pickett. Now watch the man in motion. Halfback Bob Kelly from Notre Dame. O'Rourke fades back and zing! Six points. Later in the game, it looks like the Dons might score again as Chuck Fennenbach fields Frankie Albert's punt and brings it back 55 yards to the San Francisco 41. But the 49ers hold, and in goes Ben Agajanian. He's already booted a 53-yard record breaker against Cleveland, so this 51-yarder is a cinch for the Don's phenomenal place-kicking artist who does all the booting despite the fact that he is totally. Now it's Albert's turn to be the hero, and Frankie pulls this picture play out of his bag of tricks. A beautiful forward lateral, Albert to Sousoff to Eshmont to the Don's 11-yard line. Again, he goes back to pass, but this time Sugarfoot Anderson pours in to break up the play as he dumps Albert for a 20-yard loss. But on the very next play, Albert stages his own version of Frankie and Johnny. A 15-yard pass, Frankie Albert to Johnny Strakowski, and Strakowski goes 18 yards for a touchdown. Now late in the fourth quarter, Dobbs punts to Ned Matthews. Watch out! With only seconds left in the game, Frankie Albert hits right end. Alan Beals with a 10-yard pass, and Beals goes 35 more for the game-winning touchdown. And that brings us to the middle of December and the final game of the season for the Dons. Agajanian kicks off to the Chicago Rockets. The ball carriers hit, hit hard, so hard he fumbles, and the Dons take over on the Chicago 20. And now it looks as though the Dons are anxious to be home for Christmas, as on the first play, little Charlie O'Rourke connects with Dale Gentry in the end zone for a touchdown. Even when the Rockets have the ball, they can't advance it, they have to punt. And that's dangerous when a man like Glenn Dobbs is playing safety. Here's the outstanding play of the 1947 season. The long punt spirals down the field of the Don 12-yard line. Dobbs takes it and gets back 12 yards before he's caught by a swarm of rockets. Just as he's about to be tackled, Dobbs heaves a long lateral pass. And on the other side of the field, Pennenbach is waiting for it. For believe it or not, this was a set play called by Dobbs before the punt. And aided by this great block, 
Chuck Campers all the way, 65 yards for another Don touchdown as the half ends. And between halves, Henry Diaz, captain of the undefeated Al Jolson Sonny Boys, receives the Don Amici Trophy awarded each year to the championship kid football team. And now back to the second half of the game. It starts out right where it left off as Don halfback Harry Clark takes the kickoff back 32 yards before he's snowed under by the entire Chicago team. And it was passing like this that won Glenn Dodd's All-American Honors at Tulsa. On the dead run, he leaps high in the air and takes a perfect strike to Bob Titchener, good for 42 yards. Then with a Chicago defense split, Dobbs gives on direct handoff to Kimbrough, who smashes through the line, over the backers up, and is on his way 50 yards to the Rockets' goal line. And still Chicago can't move when they have the ball. Here they try a pass, and Frankowski pours through to smear the passes. But sometimes even that's better than getting passes away, like this one, which is plucked out of the air by the Don's Bob Nelson. He picks up 40 yards before being hit then laterals to Billy Reinhardt, who goes the remaining 10 yards for the touchdown. And the timer's gun goes off, ending the game and the 1947 season. Slowly, the players file off the field. For some, this was the last game of football. For others, only the start. But all take with them a lot of memories of the Los Angeles Dons and the 1947 season of Major League Football. And so, too, do the fans. In the dressing room, you see Don Amici making his way over toward where you sit. Fellas, I want to thank you all for the way you worked to make the Dons a success this fall. While we didn't win the championship, we did win a lot of friends. 300,000 Los Angeles sport fans turned out for our seven home games this year, but this is only the beginning. The All-America Football Conference and the Los Angeles Dons are here to stay. We'll be back next year, year after that, and the year after that. And in the years to come, we're going to bring to Los Angeles the kind of team that they deserve. Among the great college stars who will be Dons in 1948 is Herman Wiedemeyer. Those of you who have seen Wiedemeyer in action know that we have acquired a spectacular breakaway runner. His brilliant play, like this 55-yard touchdown gallop against Washington University, and whose fighting heart have stamped him as one of the truly great college stars of the past decade. I'm looking forward to the 1948 season with high hopes to a Don team that will provide for the fans of Los Angeles thrilling football, wide open football, hard, clean football, and the best football 